Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. I'm gonna do a quick video today just on a, a first impressions. The Z8, the Nikon Z8 was just released. Let me talk about it right after this. <laughs> Nikon's been teasing this for a long time and people have been speculating that the, the Z8 will be a ultra high resolution, maybe 60 plus megapixels. Um, and that it, it would be a little bit different camera than the Z9. And, and it turns out, <laughs> What it is, it's a Z9. It's a Z9 Lite. I was amazed. I actually went through this morning and looked at all of the specs. Um, everything that Nikon has released on the Z9 and the Z8. And I was just blown away. So let, let's just start with some of the overviews. What, what it's touted as. It's touted as this hybrid uh, multimedia camera. Well, essentially, that's what the Z9 was, uh, but in a smaller package. So the Z8 offering a lightweight option versus the Z9 at about a $1,500 savings. So pretty appealing um, on the surface, but but not a lot different. So let me give you my thoughts on this. And, and since I do wildlife photography and, and specifically with bird photography, I'll talk about this as people can get this information anywhere. I'm gonna try to cater this a little bit more just to, to what I do. So wildlife photography and bird photography. I'm gonna pull up a screen over here and just just go through real quickly some of the, the specs. So let's look at this. Um, if you look at these two screens, on the left, you'll see the Z9. On the right, you'll see the Z8. You can see the price in there. So the Z9 at 5,500, the Z8 at 4,000. Everything on here, it literally looks as if you could have copy and pasted the entire left side of this with one exception. The one exception is that the Z9 is going to give you two full CF Express Type B, the fast cards, uh, which are also compatible with XQD. So if you own those older cards, you can use those. But it gives you two of those slots. The Z8 is going to give you one of those slots plus an SD. So you lose that second CF Express um, slot. I, I got to be honest, for some people, that could be a big deal. If you're a professional photographer, you're backing up, you're shooting to two cards, you know, maybe that's a big deal because you want both both of those cards to be really fast. Um, for most people, the majority of serious hobbyists, and that's, you know, when you're looking at $4,000, you're looking at a pretty serious investment. But there are a lot of people, you know, I come across a lot of people in wildlife photography that have money and are willing to spend, you know, top dollar on a hobby. But do you need two of those slots? For most people, most people know. I prefer to for sure. But again, we're talking about $1,500. So what else is different in these two cameras? Well, let me run down. I'm going to, if, if you were to run through these texts, um, it, and I know it's going to be really difficult for you to see on this screen. I just want you to trust me. I went through everything on the left side and everything on the right side. This whole thing. And I can tell you, couldn't find almost anything different. I went through every single the electronic shutter, the uh, uh, ISO range, the, the dynamic range, uh, everything was literally the same. So you're getting the same frame rate. You're getting the same sensor. Um, everything about those two things. And you're getting the same autofocus system. Big deal. There was some speculation that maybe they would uh, almost dummy down the autofocus system and lower the price point. Uh, a lot of people were speculating the price point originally might come in between three thousand, around three thousand dollars, thirty four hundred, so a little bit higher price point. But essentially, again, it's a Z nine in a smaller package. The other big difference, and, and probably the the only two differences: one, the card slots; two, the battery. So I want to talk about that a little bit with my experience. So the ENL fifteen series is the one that the D500 used, the, the um, Z6, the Z7, they all use the smaller uh, battery. The battery life on those isn't great on mirrorless lens or mirrorless bodies. Uh, the mirrorless bodies do chew up a little bit more power. You've got the electric viewfinder, the electronic viewfinder, the autofocus system is probably using a little bit more. No mechanical shutter. Um, so they're, they're probably saving a little bit there. But I think overall, you'll find that if you're coming from a DSLR to a mirrorless body, the batteries will go a little bit quicker, a little bit faster on these mirrorless uh, bodies. So I was really excited when the Z9 came out because you get the big battery. You get the uh, the 18 series battery. 
on the Z8, you're going back to the smaller battery. Now, if you look at the battery life indications, um, you're going to see that it's about, and these battery life tests or, or ratings are so, so far off. Um, I think the Z9 rates yet like 720 frames at, at a high quality setting with everything going. It, I, I'm getting much more than that, like much more than that. I'm probably at 2000 frames before I even think about looking at the battery. So um, I take that with a grain of salt. But if we're if we're going to say the same methodology is used for both, then the Z8 frames per battery is about half the Z9. So let's just assume uh, I real life it doesn't it feels like the 18 series battery is better than twice the 15 series battery, but let's just assume that the 18 series batteries are twice as good or twice last twice as long as the 15s. That's a big difference. There's one other thing to consider. And that is that the Z8 is a pound lighter. So that's, that's for some people, that's a big deal. So we're talking about a, a full pound lighter. And it could pair better with a lot of shorter lenses. If you're shooting the 400, 4.5, I had a client the other day shooting a 400, 4.5 on a Z9. And the thing is just, you almost can't balance it on a tripod. It's just, it's just that far off. So... You know, we were looking at a different lens foot. Could we put something else on there? Could we get, you know, a, a way around this problem? So a longer lens plate. And, and we kind of worked out a resolution. But it's. I think this Z8 is going to balance better just because it's a full pound lighter on the back side. However, there's also an option to add a battery grip. So let's talk about that. So just if we're going to look at apples to apples and we're going to say we want these two to be equivalent to each other. We add the battery pack on. Guess what? The battery pack weighs one pound. So now you've essentially eliminated the, the, the form factor, the, the weight reduction, because you've got the battery pack on there. The battery pack holds two 15 series batteries. That's going to get you about the same life as the 18 series battery on the Z9. So if you add the battery pack, and we're going to call it, it's, it's 346 is the retail price on B&H. You can see it over here. We're going to round these numbers up and we're going to say now the, the apples to apples comparison is a $5,500 Z9 with good battery life versus the, we're going to round this up to $4,500 Z8 with the battery pack and two 15 series batteries that'll go in there. That's going to last you about the same amount of time. There is something called a hot swap, which you can do with this battery pack. It means you can actually run off one battery while you're changing the other for continuous power all the time. You actually you actually can't do that with a Z9. You can use an external power source um, and maybe get around that. But but if you're just talking batteries, you do have to physically remove one battery on the Z9 and put the others in. Don't think that's a difference, especially for wildlife photography. If you were doing long videos or... Um, like a time-lapse situation, maybe that's something to consider. But again, I'm trying to stick to, to wildlife for this one. So here's what I'm going to tell you. My initial thoughts. The Z8 with the battery pack weighs the same. It's $1,000 less. And the only thing you're really losing, practically losing, is one card slot that goes from a, a CF Express Type B to an SD. That's $1,000 difference in price. Man, I'm thinking it sounds like a pretty good deal. Uh, not a, not necessarily a good deal. It sounds like a pretty good savings if I'm only giving up practically one one card slot. It really the Z8 is is it's it really should have been named the Z9L, the Z9 Lite. For somebody that doesn't want doesn't want the extra weight, if you don't get that battery pack again, you will save the extra five hundred dollars ish. I'm rounding that up. Save an extra four five hundred dollars, and you will get that pound back. But you're going to be popping that that fifteen series battery in and out a little bit more than you ever would on the uh, the Z9. So that's my initial thoughts. If you're a wildlife photographer, or bird photographer, you're giving up nothing in autofocus. You're giving up nothing in resolution. You're giving up nothing in the the video capability. You are giving up literally nothing except battery life. If if you don't add that battery pack and you want to save the pound. And you're giving up one card slot. And that that is a big savings in money. It's at least $1,000. Even if you add the battery pack and it's $1,500, 
if somebody was coming to me today and said, Scott, I'm a wildlife photographer or a bird photographer. I want to upgrade. I'm getting out of the DSLR. I want to get my first mirrorless and I have saved and I'm ready to put a chunk of money. Should I get the Z8 or the Z9? For most people, I would, at this point, I would say save the $1,000 and put that maybe into a second lens or put it somewhere else in your gear. But $1,000 seems like a pretty good savings on this one. I would not be surprised, by the way, if the Z9 took a price reduction at some point. I, I just, it would not surprise me if we saw a like a, a $300 or, or a $500 price reduction over the next six months, just to get the prices a little bit more in line. Because right now, the Z8 feels... I'm not overwhelmed by this, by the way. There's nothing exciting here. It's just, it literally is a Z9 light, but it does feel like $1,000 less might be worth it. So anyway, that's my thoughts for you today. Thought I'd just put this video out real quick. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. Got a lot of videos out there. I don't do a ton of gear, but I do some some gear reviews on the channel. I do some educational things. I, I do a lot of these quick thoughts videos where I just put some ideas out there for wildlife photographers. So if you're not subscribed, hit the button down there. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video and make sure you hit that bell for notification in the future. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together. <laughs>